Hey, I'm here at the um, Hormel Nature Center. I thought this would be a nice place to read a few chapters of Cabin Creek Mysteries to you today. Um, just sitting out here enjoying the peace and the calm and really excited because I just heard a, and saw a pileated woodpecker, which is one of my favorite birds. If you've not seen a pileated woodpecker before, they are amazing. So pretty excited about that, but um, I've recorded up through chapter 9, so thought I would start with chapter 10 today. Chapter 10 is called The Clues, okay? Uh, Jeff and David climbed down the tree in a hurry. Claire was pacing in front of the fort with the folding shovel. Her red hair shone in the sunlight. Claire, what's wrong? They asked, throwing their packs to the ground. I think I found a clue. Sorry to worry you, but, well, you'll see. Hurry. Inside the cabin by the fireplace, she poked the shovel into some soft dirt. I was digging where we found that old kettle and saw this. With the spade, she lifted what appeared to be the lid to a box. The wood was rotten. Wow, cried David. Is there more? Yes, that's why I wanted you guys here. Something is buried. Maybe together we can dig it up without things falling apart. It's the treasure, said David. I knew it. Then let's be careful. Jeff wasn't as quick to jump to conclusions. With two shovels and a tin cup, the cousins carefully scraped away dirt and began digging. At last, they were able to lift out the remains of a small wooden chest the size of a shoebox. They set it on their table and stared. What is it? They asked one another. Claire zipped her pack and took out her hairbrush. First, let's wipe away the dust. Using her brush as a little broom, she uncovered a small metal wheel. It had sharp edges and was attached to what looked like an iron horseshoe. There were two of these objects inside the chest. The cousins took turns examining them. They were heavy. Spurs, cried David. So here's a picture of the spurs. And a spur is something a cowboy used to put on the back of his boots. Um, and it kind of, <clears throat> when he needed the horse to move, he could use those to kind of get the horse into motion. Jeff laughed out loud. All right, silver spurs, just like Mr. Welbeck said. Boy, are they tarnished. While the brothers gave each other high fives, Claire felt inside the box. She pulled out part of a newspaper, the Cabin Creek Gazette. It was brittle, fragile, and tore when she unfolded it. Look, guys, this is from 1882. She started reading. There's a picture of the poster. Cabin Creek Gazette, July 10, 1882. Wells Fargo driver killed on Main Street. $12,000 missing. Silver Spur Bandit still on the loose. Hand shot off in bloody gun battle. Reward dead or alive. Sheriff Gus Penny and Posse searching. Wow, said David, 12,000 bucks, which in 1882 was a lot of money. So this was the robber's secret chest. His spurs are here, but where's the treasure? Maybe it's buried in this cabin, Claire replied, or robber's cave, if we ever find it. But Jeff had noticed something odd. Read that again, Claire, about the gun battle. I hope you're thinking what David's thinking, or what Jeff is thinking. Hmm, let's see. It says the bandit's hand was shot off. Jeff and David fell silent. What's wrong? She asked. Jeff looked at his brother. We were getting ready to tell you. Tell me what? The boys talked at once. We already found a clue the first day we got here. A human foot. Totally gross. We buried it so no one else would steal it. Claire seated herself on the stool and smiled. Wow, she said. So you really found a person's foot? Do you think it belonged to the Silver Spur Bandit? Definitely, said David. I'm sure of it now. Wait a second. Jeff took a long drink from his canteen and screwed on the cap. The article says it was a hand, not a foot. Then it's a mistake, David said, sure of himself. 
Mom's always showing us typos and bad grammar in the newspaper. So the bandit lost his foot? Asked Claire. Not his hand. You think the Gazette was wrong? David nodded. Absolutely. Jeff was more cautious. Maybe, he said. While eating their sandwiches, Claire jumped off her stool. Oh, I almost forgot your surprise. The name of our fort. Both boys took a breath. They had promised Claire she could choose the name. Ta-da, announced Claire. It's Fort Grizzlypaw, in honor of your club, of the club your dad started, and also because Grizzlypaw Wilderness is across the lake. I think it's a good name for this place, don't you? Jeff looked at her with a smile. You really thought about this, he said. I like it. Me too, said David. I'm glad it's not Fort Rosie Sunshine Face or something splashy like that. David, Claire put her hand on her hip and rolled her eyes. You're silly. How did you know that was my second choice? To keep their discoveries a secret, the cousins hid the old chest at home. They buried it and the spurs in David's closet under a pile of shoes and comic books. Claire placed the newspaper article inside of a book to keep it flat. Maybe we should give this stuff to the museum, Jeff said. Can't we wait a while, asked David. If other people know, they'll all come to Lost Island looking for treasure. I know. Let's go to the library first, Claire suggested. If we can find an old prospector's map, then... Then we can get to the cave first, said David, before the McCoy brothers and everyone else. Okay, so that is the end of chapter 10. Um, the next chapter, chapter 11, is called A Suspicious Customer.